Just even as we're going to pray for our nation, I'm, I was so blessed by the sermon. And in my spirit, what I heard in my spirit was never again Nigeria. Never again. As, as we are praying individually for ourselves, we'll say, I was saying to myself, never again Nigeria. We're at a sensitive place. And never again Nigeria. Most blessed. Genesis 1, 2 to 3. It says, Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. That's what's going to happen in our nation as we speak over our nation. When you see those things that are contrary, like we heard this morning, we have the authority. The Bible says, When they say that they're casting down, you're saying that they're lifting up. You are not from just anywhere. We belong to the kingdom of God. I know many times the situation scares us in the face, but guess what? That's why we have a company we go back to who reminds us of who we are. So when they say there's four scars you, don't join them and begin to talk about the problems. You see how this problem is going to be solved and it must be solved. I know, it's, I know sometimes we think my words and I speak my words, how's it going to have any effect? You, are, you forget that the power of life and death are in our tongue. I just want to encourage us morning before we pray. I don't know if you also know Isaiah 62, verse 6 to 7. It says, I've set watchmen upon your walls, O Nigeria, who will not hold their peace day or night, and they will keep making mention of Nigeria and not keep silent until I establish Nigeria as a praise in the earth. Or do you remember? Exodus 17, 11. It says, And it came to pass when Moses' hand was held up that Israel prevailed. When he let his hand down that Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. But they took a stone and put it under him and sat thereon. And Aaron and Hor stayed up his hands. Whenever we put our hands down and say, Well, it's all over. Let me start thinking of plan B. Nigeria continues in that way, but if we keep our hands up, we heard this morning, sometimes you think we've been praying, we've been praying, it's not working who told you? Do you see the spiritual? Do you see when the cup is going to be full and going to be running over? Do you know whether you are just at that point? And we dare say Nigeria is at a sensitive place so let's just begin to 
Thank God for this nation. How thus far God has kept us. First Thessalonians 5, 18 says, in every situation and circumstance we find ourselves, he says, give thanks. Father, we thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for where we are. We know we should not be where we ought. Well, we're not where we might have wanted to be. But the fact that we're still standing, the fact that many have not gone through what we've gone through and they are not around today is because of your mercy and grace over this nation. So Father, we come first of all from a place of thanksgiving to say thank you thank you for all you have done thank you for keeping me from the many dangers many things have happened to this nation but yet we are still standing we are still standing despite all what has been done Nigeria is still standing and then we're going to quickly go to first Timothy 2 1 to 3 the Bible says that I exhort you pray for those in authority now don't get me wrong I know sometimes it's good to criticize but let it be constructive criticism let it not be criticism that doesn't have anything in it but the Bible says you should pray for those in authority and I love the next verse the next verse says what it says that you it didn't say them it says you will then live a peaceable life because why you have interceded for those in authority father we begin to pray for every leader in this nation the lord we know that the hearts of kings are in your hands we pray that their hearts will be steered in the right direction you know sometimes leaders sit on seats right and you know that look they, sometimes you want to make a decision but many are contending but guess what because of the prayers of the people they begin to say i don't know why i woke up and i want to just do this they're like this is not normally me but guess what it's the prayers of the righteous and father we're praying this morning for the leaders that every leader in authority even as nigeria is on that place a very sensitive and delicate place we pray that the leaders of this nation will begin to make decisions we soak them in the depth of the riches both of god's wisdom and knowledge their judgment become unsearchable their ways past finding out in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus just stay with me psalm 33 10 to 11 it says the lord brings the counsel of the hidden to nothing another version says the lord brings the counsel of the nations to zero he makes the devices of the people of none effect but i love it the next verse 11 it says the counsel of the lord stands forever we declare over nigeria that the counsel of this of the lord will stand over this nation the counsel of the lord what has god said over this nation you know i'm never discouraged about the fact that many don't want to pray for Nigeria or many are not encouraged by Nigeria because I know too well from the Bible that every time there was about to be massive change not everyone believed it not everyone saw it and I'm like God I tell God I say in my quiet places God I'll be among the few who choose to believe your word for this nation even if I don't see it Lord I'll still stand by knowing that you desire for this nation to be great and so shall it be and so shall it be so shall it be in Jesus name and then I love it you know whenever God does this kind of thing God is confirming to you that I, I'm truly leading you this morning was when I waited upon the Lord and I got this and I never knew that Pastor Ezra was going to mention the scripture Psalm 7 verse 9 Psalm 7 verse 9 this was weeks ago in the prayer I was praying and I remember somebody mentioned this prayer and ever since he mentioned that prayer I've been praying this prayer Psalm 7 verse 9 he says oh let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Father, let the wickedness of the wicked in Nigeria come to an end in the mighty name of God. Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Enough of the wickedness of the wicked. And then look at what it says in the next verse. It says, but establish the just. For the righteous God tried the hearts and the reins. Father, we are declaring that let, the, let an end come to the wickedness of the wicked. It took one man to say, let the sun stand. God is saying, look, it's not about how you are, it's about who is willing. I'm not looking for who has prayed, who has the years of experience. In fact, those things are a blockade because you think, well, I know how this thing ought to be. I'm looking for people who are just coming willing. You might just be in your room and I tell you, this is what you should declare and it happens. That's what God is looking for because God likes and delights to take those in the background and put them in the front. Those who consider that only God could have done this. And that's what God is looking for. And then, really quickly, we go to ourselves. 
Isaiah 60, the Bible has said what? Arise and shine. That means, arise means that you're sitting, stand up, and it says shine. No matter the field you are in, private sector, public sector, non-profit sector, it says shine your light. Do those good deeds that you ought to do that they may praise your Father in heaven. Begin to pray that, Father, I arise and shine. This is not a time for me to be discouraged. This is not a time for me to stay back in the background and say, well, what is my little impulse having? What is my little impact having? That right behavior here, that right thing and no, Father, I choose to do what I will do in my own space knowing fully well that change happens in that way. It comes in trickles and all of a sudden the light hits the whole place. Sorry, my time has run out but let me just take this. And I love it. I love it. It says Nehemiah, when they were building he says they had sword in their hands and they were building with this hand. God said it's a time that as you are building and doing the right deeds, you have your sword, the sword of the word of God. It's not necessarily that it's going to be a sword where I'm going to have to fight physically, but the sword of, go, of, the, of God, his word in our hands, speaking those words as you are building. Yes, as you are building, there are enemies, they are coming, discouraging you. That's what happened with Nehemiah's time. Sambala and Tobiah, they were all there hanging around, but he said, no, we will continue. So Father, we pray that despite all what we may see, we will still continue to build. We will still continue to build. We will still continue to build. We will not be discouraged. And as I round up, this is now not a prayer, but this is what I received as I rounded up. And it says, what will be the portion of this nation? And it's Isaiah 60, 10 to 11. He says, the sons of strangers will build up your walls, Nigeria. The king shall minister unto you. For in my wrath, it seems like I smote thee. But in my favor, I have mercy upon you, Nigeria. Your gates shall be open, Nigeria. They shall not be shut day nor night. Men will bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. He says, and the sons of them that afflicted you, they will come bowing to you. This is what it shall be for the city of the Lord. And violence shall no longer be heard in this land. For you shall call your walls salvation. And you shall call your walls praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.